A major food chain shift appears to be happening in the Arctic right now. This is nothing new. This is getting worse every year, though. Uh, we know that the Arctic, even Alaska, is hitting record heat. Siberia as well. They even have uh, permafrost melt to the point that the pipelines are shifting position and we have a tremendous amount of uh, breakage of these pipes and environmental disasters in the Siberian areas. The companies don't want to pay for uh, the uh, cleanup because they say this is a, a, an act of God. The permafrost frost melting is not the fault of the corporations that have to pay for the disasters. So this is a, a big problem. The Arctic, from what the scientists are telling us, in two decades will be ice-free. And there is um, a race now for various countries to get into the sections of the Arctic at the North Pole in order to claim hold of the uh, gas and oil industry there, which is estimated to be in the trillions of dollars worth of assets. And now, a major food chain shift appears to be happening in the Arctic. Dark waters are blooming with algae, as sunlight floods spaces long obscured by the sheets of ice, which of course are melting. Over the past two decades, there's been a 57% increase in phytoplankton in the Arctic Ocean, an analysis by researchers from Stanford University reveals. That's outpaced scientists' expectations and is changing the way the ocean stores carbon, as well as sucking up resources needed for the rest of the ecosystem, and no one's sure what that means. Earth system scientist Kevin Arrigo says the rates are really important in terms of how much food there is for the rest of the ecosystem. It's also important because this one is one of the main ways carbon dioxide is pulled out of the atmosphere and into the ocean. At first glance, this expansion of the phytosynthesizing part of the food chain should not be all that surprising. Global warming has caused the Arctic ice sheets to wither away over the decades, opening up new frontiers for phytoplankton to blossom. According to the researchers from around 2009, the rate at which new wa open water has been, being, was being exposed dropped off significantly, and by all accounts, this should have been followed by a similar decline in greenery. After all, no matter how much the sun shines, population numbers should taper off as the amount of available nitrogen and other essential elements gets used up. But that is not what's happening. This expansion at the base of the food pyramid, described in eco-jargon as a gain in the rate of net primary production, or NPP, just kept going. The increase in NPP over the past decade is due almost exclusively to a recent increase in phytoplankton biomass. It's hard to know whether we should be alarmed or appreciative. After all, more green stuff means more food for herbivores, which means more meat for the carnivores, not to mention more carbon being locked away in organic molecules. But the Arctic Ocean is not really a big player when it comes to sinking carbon especially if vanishing sea ice simply makes way for more marine traffic. And as Arrigo puts it, life in the Arctic is also better adapted to having plenty of ice around. He says there's going to be winners and losers. And more to the point, the extended surge in NPP observed by the team has been perplexing enough to force him to look at existing explanations and ask what they might have missed. The study's lead author, environmentalist science, scientist Kate Willis, explains it was initially assumed that there was not a big store of nutrients to chew through, and a question that's being addressed previously by the team studies. Lewis says, we knew the Arctic had increased production in the last few years, but it seemed possible the system was just recycling the same store of nutrients. She said, our study shows that's not the case. Phytoplankton are absorbing more carbon year after year as new nutrients come into this ocean. And what that was unexpected, and it has big ecological impacts. Getting a grip on the influx of nutrients is easier said than done, since it depends on so much of the complexities of ocean currents, spreading mixes of different materials through water columns and following trends that are also at the whim of a changing global climate. 
Even just getting at this point in mapping the changes in phytoplankton required a huge rethink on how to measure the shades of color that are traditionally used to analyze NPP. Algorithms that work everywhere else in the world that look at the color of the ocean to judge how much phytoplankton are there do not work in the Arctic at all. Armed with improved Arctic-specific processes, Lewis and her team can now be confident that the changes we're seeing in the planet's far north do point to a sustained blooming of producers fed by nutrients pouring in. Further studies on our planet's fast circulating network of atmospheric and oceanic systems could help us better nail down what to expect of this vast algal bloom and what it means for the Arctic's future. This was published in Science Magazine and it's on Science Alert by Mike McRae. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.